right, I'm Jackie Porter and I'm joined by Farnoosh and Kelly Murdoch. So as some background, uh, we in the product organization have established a working group to redesign our career development framework. So right now we have a career development framework that's based off of a career progression um, established by Scott, who's our chief product officer. And it currently progresses our um, intermediate product manager role up through the vice president um, through several different um, competencies or skill groups. And these skill groups aren't mapping to what are familiar to various product managers across the industry. So what we wanted to do in this working group uh, was to kind of zoom out and do some research to understand what are um, different skills at other companies or in the industry or um, how do other organizations view the product manager skills between individual contributors and maybe the first frontline manager role. And really take an objective look so that we can start to redefine the product manager skill sets so we can give industry-based objective um, evaluation for our product managers. Because that's kind of, right now, we're not giving objective evaluations um, that translate very well to the industry outside of GitLab. So we're hopefully, what we can get in this meeting is kind of an answer to how other people in GitLab are doing competency-based evaluation and what we can do as far as in the product organization to, to help our journey here. Yeah, and I don't know if I'm the best resource in the sense that it's my understanding that this isn't necessarily occurring um, anywhere else. I know that there's been, the topic has been raised about getting like company specific competencies and really digging into different um, departments and organizations to understand that. The only team I know that's done this, but again, we're, we're having trouble kind of taking it forward is our sales organization. The um, sales enablement group came up with um, uh, field enablement uh, competencies where, and I can show you all kind of what that looks like, where when you look at the long-term goal, it's like, this is what we're kind of holding our reps accountable for. And then, you know, if long-term, if we're having performance issues, we can understand where the gap was within these competencies. And then myself on the recruiting side, I had helped create like an interview framework that then we're interviewing towards these competencies as well. Now, to my second point is where you've had trouble like pushing that out. Like we created the uh, field competency interview framework and it, we just last month kind of went back and said like, how's it going to people? And we found out like nobody's using it. <laughs> so we had to kind of step back and say like, okay, how can, like, are we going to be using this? And if so, how do we like make people do it versus saying like, here's a resource and encouraging people to do it. Um, so again, I think that's, a company opportunity of, of, of doing that. The other part of that I would say is that um, Rob Allen's in week three, he's our new VP of TA. And I know this is top of mind for him too. He and I have, have had different conversations on that and almost building out like a global assessment strategy for um, the organization and stuff. So that's kind of on our, we hope our roadmap there. Um, so unfortunately, I don't think you necessarily have other teams within the company to lean on with something like this. I think it's going to be something that you kind of create and figure it out, unfortunately. Can you show us maybe how sales is currently doing it? Um, I know that you have like a repository set up and kind of design, like show us how you design it. Cause that might give us some ideas for structurally how we could approach it. Yeah, let me uh, um, just give you guys sharing, right, Jackie Porter. Oops, 
Sorry, hold on. I'm just going to get y'all sharing right. Kelly, as you're pulling that up, I'm just going to share a side note um, here. So yeah. I think it's actually really cool, um, Jackie, and this is an opportunity for us to actually kind of lead how we might be able to structure this successfully for our team um, so that other teams can, can take a look at how product pulls it together and structures it for reference. Just a side note, I think like it's too bad that we don't have anything to model it after, but I think it's kind of a cool greenfield opportunity as well for us. I, I think so too, to be honest. I'm like, spent, and I say that more, so I've been at GitLab two and a half years. So it's almost more exciting that like, if they had established this two years ago and then people were like, we have a harder time, like, like okay, let's change, you know, where now it's like, we're the size company we are today. We have like, Wendy Jones in place as a CPO where I think she's more vocal and like if y'all discover that like something's not aligning like I feel like we have more flexibility where before it was like nope here's what it is and this is what it's gonna you know what I mean so I think to your to your point it's a great time to kind of build what you think that looks like um, I shared with you, so that first link is the, what I discussed where the field or excuse me, sales enablement team created, they met with, um, you know, like the enterprise team, commercial team, and they went through like, does this make sense as your core competencies and then your examples and, um, what that means. And then the second thing I shared was just the slide deck. Um, it's, it's outdated from when we did it, but just the presentation, um, on the field competency training. And the reason why I shared that with you is because you, I don't know how much y'all utilize like greenhouse. So like when you're doing the interview part, like we can change like scorecards or different assessment tools within greenhouse. And it's something I don't think we fully utilize here as well. So, um, so yeah, there's those opportunities as well. Um, I have seen some I'm obviously, I'm not an expert on um, the R&D side of the house at all. Um, I've recruited on some roles in the past, but um, I did sit in on a, um, a demo for like a company that their product assesses this type of thing where you kind of come up with these competencies and then their software like spits out like where candidates fall within that as well like so there are things out there that depending on budget and stuff if it's beneficial that's, that's helpful like to like a an, a an assessment tool that would allow us to grade and evaluate fit that 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 would be helpful to kind of maybe throw out a noop if we're looking if we're hiring a lot kind of thing yeah and i remember when i sat in on the demo the first thing that came to mind is like, is this something we can just create ourselves kind of thing? Um, almost mimicking what they had put together. But, you know, I don't know if, you know, we, we people have the bandwidth to do that or whatnot, but um, we could also request like a demo where y'all sit on just to see what, I, I'd have to dig into the issues on what, I'm drawing a blank on what the company was, but that could be a option. That would be super just to, just to understand the, the product, um, because then we could evaluate what that tool is and collect some requirements because we are product people after all, you know? Yeah, I know. <laughs> so that would be awesome, Kelly. Thank you so much for, for letting okay. us know. Yeah, I'll dig into that and, and see and get something set up. Yeah. And then I appreciate you linking um, the interview competencies in that Slack thread because this list of all of the competencies that we currently have um, helps map kind of the baseline expectations for GitLab. And those are different skills that we may want to incorporate as a part of our product management um, evaluation framework is those are skills that we may want to consider anyways, right? Yeah, hundred percent. And again, I apologize. I'm not coming to this conversation with extensive knowledge on what y'all have experienced and stuff on your side, but like myself being with sales day one, like I could easily say to the sales team, like, hey, one of the gaps y'all are experiencing is um, folks not being able to dive into like the technical piece of GitLab. Like they need to be able to use Slack. They need to be like, 
I'm sure y'all don't necessarily have that trouble as much, but like I can call out more of those like softer opportunities that aren't part of the day to day job, but what then we see performance situations later and then we're back feeling like, you know, it's just all a trend. Um, and that's where you'll see like when I had created this, I had even like I broke off like remote work where there are specific questions with remote work because sometimes you see that being the issue versus like our values, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, did, did as y'all are doing um, this initiative, have you thought through the competencies yet and what they are? Or that's where you're at is like figuring that out. That's exactly where we're at. So okay. we current, we have existing competencies. Actually, we have like 50 existing competencies listed out. And we clearly that's, that's a lot of competencies that are collected that um, have been formed by various topics that people are coaching to. And that's kind of why we're at this research phase to assess what competencies do we feel the industry is measuring product managers by. And what do we feel um, GitLab should be evaluating product managers by? Because those are the various standards that we're kind of competing against right now is, um, are we thinking that GitLab product managers should be performing at a different level than, this, than, than the industry standard? And mm -hmm. if GitLab product managers end up you know, going to a different company, are they, do they have the right skills to perform, right? Yeah. No, that makes sense. My wheels are just spinning on like, ooh, like, you know, with, um, I don't know how deep y'all's network is too outside of GitLab to just have conversations externally. Um, and then even um, getting our sales enablement team's uh, expertise just to understand like what process they use. So then we can say, oh, that sounds great. Maybe we'll utilize that. Or you're like, eh, let's use pieces that kind of thing um, on that. So you're, you're tapping into something. I have two processes I'm, that I'm undertaking. I'm doing um, this first one, which is research industry. And then I'll be doing a internal survey on like, what are people's expectations of product managers? And then we'll take that to inform like certain skills that we okay. think product managers should have. And so we'll have this like industry-based perspective and then GitLab skills and then uh, internal perspectives. Oh. And then Anoop will kind of use that to aggregate. Anoop in the working group, of course, will yeah. use that to aggregate what we think are the actual competencies. Um, okay. in the end, that's the kind of idea. Cause you're absolutely right. Like there's this um, perspective and thesis that maybe there's uh, an internal perspective that we that we have about what product manage, managers are doing that inform yeah. our competencies. Yeah, yeah. Have you start, um, begun the research phase yet? Or is that, yeah. Are you finding that, oh yeah, I look at that issue. Sorry, I didn't click into it. Um, are you finding that just like Googling things, a lot of information's out there? Yeah, so, um, couple, there's a couple of things like Radford does publish some baseline, like this is what product managers should be doing. That is like a lagging, um, non, non, um, cutting edge technology company standard for product managers. So sometimes we have to balance that against what someone like Amazon or, uh, Google or super cutting edge companies would define as product managers. So I am learning like what we may want to also do is start looking at job descriptions for these cutting edge companies that we want to be like, um, or are even our competitors that we feel like are really strong, um, that are poaching our product managers, for example, <laughs> um, that we would want to evaluate against. Um, as, as on par uh, for competencies, because that is something to, to consider. Mm. But there is a lot of information out there. Going back to your point of like looking at our network and even interviewing other product leaders, like what do you consider standards for your product managers would be a part of, should be a part of this research effort. Yeah, and actually another thing that comes to mind that I could help you on the research is to your point of, um, 
these companies that were like losing folks too is I could probably pull some data for you to understand. Like I know LinkedIn has um, the insights on like where have we lost people to and where have we taken people from kind oh, of thing. Awesome. So what, um, and, and I hope y'all don't think I'm too dumb about this, but like when I'm thinking of the product team, if I'm pulling that information, is there specific roles or just the product organization as a whole, like that we'd want to look into? Or is there specific like breakdown? Like I'm thinking like sales, they have their enterprise, their commercial, like, is there a certain breakdown? I think, and I know I could find it somewhere, but no, you're, you're good. You're good. I think um, right now we're just focused on product manager as okay. a function. So um, we're not really worried about VP or directors of product okay. management. So we're just thinking product manager. So anything with senior product manager, group product manager, or product manager. Okay. Um, I would recommend considering Jackie actually whittling, whittling it down to the IC role for this first round for our focus and evenly. Uh, Anoop did say product manager to GMP. Because, I'll talk to, because I'll talk to the feedback as well, because I just uh, sorry, my connection is bad. I didn't mean to cut you off. I feel like that's um, isn't didn't Kenny just start writing up the group manager stuff? Uh, the only reason is because they do have player coach functionality. So they are Got conducting it. individual contributor responsibilities. Got it. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Because my thought is too, once you understand to your um, point of like, where we're losing folks or grabbing folks, then you could look specifically at their job descriptions because you'd know. Um, so that's an idea. I'm trying to think of some of the other tools that we have that can be helpful for this. I'm gonna look up that um, issue for product demo. Um, hmm. Yeah, I was trying to think of where else I can try to help you dig in with that. I don't know. I'll think, I'll think the, the only other thing that comes to mind, and I know this is like a different phase, but when you get to the point of a survey, I would just suggest almost having those competencies outlined where you say like, instead of saying, Hey, what do you think? Like more of an open-ended where you're saying like, uh, what's a competency? Like a good listener describes a product manager, like true or false kind of, you know, like something that's more like that type of response. And then you can have more of like an open-ending question at the end, like anything else that comes to mind, but just work on defining what some of those competencies are and then being more direct with those questions. Cause if you leave it too open-ended, it's going to be harder for you to come up with that final product kind of thing. So that's a really great call out. I, I like your, your thought there. Um, yeah. That's a super good call out. Yeah. So I'll definitely, what I'll do is I'll put a request in with our ops team to pull that info to see if that's helpful. Cause then again, you can pull those specific job descriptions to kind of compare. And then I'll figure, I'll find out, I'll find that issue of that. I mean, it was a while ago where we did that demo. Cause I think that'd be kind of cool for y'all to just listen in on and you know, it could either be something where then you're like, yeah, let's try to find the budget for this or, or it's like, thanks for the info. Like we're going to take this back and come up with something on our own, you know, but it's like a neat little insight of, of how they're looking at it. I love that. Thank you so much for, um, yeah. And actually I'm going to pull, have you ever pulled uh, LinkedIn talent insights for that role too, to see if there's any data. Okay. I'll pull that for you too. Um, that, that's not going to speak probably towards competencies, but it might have some information to help. Yeah. Uh, it's more specific to like, um, what am I trying to say? Like understanding where like university wise, like where folks might be coming from or which countries are more challenging to hire, like more of that type of insight, but maybe there's something in there. It won't hurt to pull that too. Got it. So kind of like profile based. Yeah. Maybe. And compare, it compares against other countries. I mean, it's used as a talent assessment, right? So I don't know if it'll fully have, but it won't hurt to see what's in there. Um, Cause then again, it can help you then dig while you're researching. I like that. Okay. 
Well, that's just so, um, too, do y'all see a lot of global um, hiring? Like, does it vary country to country too, or yeah? It definitely does. And we haven't had a lot of great luck hiring in EMEA. Um, I feel like our diversity has definitely slumped a little bit in that regard. Because it's um, tough to find diverse or just the talent bar is not as great. I don't know if it, I just don't, I don't know if we have had luck sourcing there. Mm. I'm not quite sure on the challenges on that front, actually. Yeah, we, I don't, I don't have the answer on that either, but, it, you know, I, I would guess that it's a combination of the two. I think um, it's probably part sourcing and part the, and I think that's why it's so important to define these competencies. And I think it's part of the skill sets that we're looking for. And I'm, I'm going to, in, tr in all transparency, I'm going to say that that's probably a product of the product of it just us not being completely objective either. Yeah. yeah. That'd be interesting to understand too, if I connect with um, the recruiters and sourcer that works on this too, to understand like, you know, again, go, I naturally go to sales, like <laughs> where we find, you know, company competencies can actually vary a little bit country to country. Like mm -hmm. for instance, like sales you end up more territory specific because you have to um like germany is going to have a different level of talent than the u.s and so it's like how do you adapt to that you could measure for the same competencies but it might be a different level like great might look a little bit different for germany compared to like america's and that's okay but folks need to understand that when hiring like kind of that kind of thing right that makes sense that makes sense like uh I learned in the in the steel industry, if you wanted to hire for, for women, you may not be getting a bachelor's degree for women in the steel industry. So if you were looking for a manager for in the steel industry, you would only hire for an associate. And that was from, from like a construction, my, my old career is to be construction. So that was like a, I know, fun facts. So <laughs> it's, you're, you're completely right. Like, so your job description needed to reflect that if you were trying to attract women candidates for these particular jobs, you couldn't write that you had to have a bachelor's degree for this management role because then you were eliminating like virtually all women yeah. in that particular demographic. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also the other side of that. And I had this conversation with Rob uh, last week actually is like, I feel like GitLab as a company, we can do a better job of like when we do get that female in the pipeline, again, my mind goes to sales, um, you know, they'll be like, oh, no, no, like she's not fitting the bar. Like, this is what we're looking for and she's here kind of thing. And it's like, okay, well, you need to either give a little bit because she's checking all these other boxes. So you have to be open-minded to, you know, develop and that kind of thing. Or this is a, still a top candidate, where else in the organization will they fit? Like. So if they're not measuring the bar, like we're not going to just go kick them to the curb, like where else could they maybe fit in kind of thing. So I think we need to do a better job on, on those type of things overall, but. This has been oh, so good. I, and that's why I love having these competencies conversations, because when you have a, in a, an objective bar that you're measuring talent from, you can have these comprehensive conversations that you are uh, sourcing candidates and evaluating your talent pool um, holistically from, but when they're not objective, you're an, an unable to effectively measure and evaluate and grow your talent pool yeah. over time. Yeah. And one of the biggest gaps I see too, again, conversation I've had with Rob since he started is like, there's so much misalignment within our interview teams. So like great means something different to everyone else. And mm -hmm. then everyone like has their different opinions on stuff and there ends up being this misalignment <laughs> across the board. So to your point, like these competencies are key to understand, like, this is what we're assessing for. This is what we're looking for. And, and this is what that means kind of thing and having more of those guidelines. So I think it's needed throughout. <laughs> Well, I'll definitely take those action items. I'm going to get an issue open to get those two reports for you, the talent insights and uh, just a look at, uh, I don't know what it's called, what kind of report, but where we're losing talent um, and we're grabbing talent. And then I'll figure out that 
product demo. Beautiful. And I um, I just created an, an issue that you can land all this stuff in um, and okay. just for easy tracking. That way you didn't have to cool. jump in a bunch of different places. Thank you so much, Kelly, for your time cool. today and for all of your help and support. Oh my goodness. I didn't expect that. Really appreciate. Oh, really? I felt like I wasn't doing, I was like, oh my gosh, I feel bad. I don't know your teams well enough to no, I spit didn't. something out, but know that I'm here. Like I will help y'all drive this in whatever way. And yeah, like, and I feel like as, you're as going I'm having these conversations with Rob, I hope we see this more. So this is, Hey, this could be fun. If y'all help me to like, I can jump in and we can come up with a framework potentially to use other parts of the organization. So that would be, that would be amazing. This is exciting. I'm, I'm actually gonna, excited. We have a lot of opportunity to shape this together. And um, I think it's going to be good. By the way, Kelly, nice to meet you we yes. both met in MRs. My favorite us. place, right? Like my yeah, favorite, our favorite place. place. We've met in MRs. So it's really lovely to actually meet you. Um, and we're excited to work with you. This is going to yes. be great. I'm, I'm actually, for better or worse, I'm excited that there isn't much of a footprint because I think we can create a great one. I think so too. I think so too. And I love it. And it's so nice to partner with new faces too for myself because um, we need new ideas and new perspectives and the job family front. Thank y'all for being patient on that. I know I met with um, Rose the other day and Juliana async just on like, like, I'm like, I don't want to like come in here and start saying stuff. So like we were having conversations about how some of that stuff should look and how we can align. So Appreciate your patience there. And no, absolutely. That was no, anything, um, anything we can do to help. We're also happy to help. Yeah. I As know we y'all are amazing. Revising a number of those topics anyway for our team. So yeah. Yeah. Cool. And yeah, we should jump on the, a call more often to work through some of this stuff too. Absolutely. It's a happening. Go. Thanks all for right. leading us, Jackie. Yeah. You bet. Anytime. Thank you all so much. Nice to meet you. Talk we'll talk soon. soon. All right. Bye. bye.